Hey look, I did a thing. There's a hole. Hey friend, today I'm gonna to show you how I welded a door into my 20 foot container, how I get power into the container, my cheap modifications to make it a better maker space. The modifications we've made and the lessons I've learned about buying a container and moving it, they're all things that I wish I knew before I got this, so I thought I'd share them all in this video. Timestamps below for where you wanna go. Let's get into it. That's fun. Timestamps blow for where you want to go. Why haven't Why haven't I said that before? Mm. Is that alliteration? That's called rhyming. Rhyming. <laughs> <laughs> So I bought a shipping container and as strange as this might sound to you, this was actually a big goal of mine for quite some time. I have visions in the future of shipping container-esque compounds and I figured what better way to start than one Ooh. container. Purchasing it was actually kind of stressful. I was looking for the cheapest price I could possibly find on Craigslist and that meant buying a container directly off the boat after it was unloaded and its lifespan was over but it was still watertight. Now delivery was delayed several times for reasons that are still unknown to me, but boy, let me tell you that day we accepted delivery late into the evening after much fiasco, the relief of actually having the container was super exciting. Some problems arose pretty quickly. Uh, the container was dropped in slightly the wrong spot, so we had to move it five feet one way and three feet the other. And I wanted to pay as little money as possible to do the first phase of its life. Uh, this light is actually from my Opa's workbench area. Um, and so it's kind of fun to have this set up in my own kind of like maker space. I think having a maker space is so helpful to just have a place that you know you've got set up in a way that's ready to meet you with whatever ideas are going on inside your head. It's basic and it is, uh, it is admittedly pretty bare bones, but my ideas are pumping of things that we're gonna be building in here and I'm pretty excited. Uh, I wanted to give some massive love to the sponsor of this video at the front end and something else that feels really good to get up and running and operational is your own website. This is one of those things that you, you know you should have in the digital age. Social media platforms are fickle, you're at the mercy of algorithms and if they want to show your posts or not. So I am always a champion of having your own home base that you have ownership over. And Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for building that and they make it incredibly easy. So you don't need all these different tools from various different companies and all these services to mishmash together to a finished result. Right from the start of finding your domain name, Squarespace has you covered. One of the features of Squarespace that I really like is how easy they make it to start an e-commerce store and get new items added and manage stock and do the emails back and forth with customers who are purchasing. I'm actually wearing a shirt that I sell over on my website and they just make it so easy to get that side of things up and running. So if you're a maker, a DIYer, or you wanna sell swag for your personal brand, they just make those steps so easy. If you're meeting with clients, they've got scheduling tools built in. If you wanna showcase your work, they've got awesome tools for embedding galleries, photos, and videos. I honestly can't give them enough credit for how simple they make the process and the quality of tools available to just make your website what you want it to be. So I highly recommend if you've been putting off starting a website, just go try a free trial. There's no strings attached, just give it a go. See what you can build. And if you like it and you're ready to commit, make sure that you use my code for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So cost, uh, we ran into an issue where we needed a place to store a lot of our possessions. Uh, we've had our van for over five years. It's gone through various different iterations of build out, but uh, some time ago now we embarked on build version 2.0 where we set it up as a proper full-fledged camper van on wheels. We did this whole video series about it, uh, making it in my landlord's driveway. Uh, if you wanna check that out, you probably should because it's pretty fun and awesome and I really like those videos. But uh, through the various stages of actually living out of the van, we didn't have places for our stuff because we didn't sell everything and I have all this filmmaking equipment. So we had a place to store it at first where I was still renting space from my old landlord. I knew I had to deal with this at some point and I was just gonna transition the stuff from the studio space to one of those like shipping units, you know, like storage wars, like one of those things. But looking into the cost of those, those are kind of expensive as well. And uh, I didn't need something that fancy. We just needed something to protect our possessions uh, from the elements. So I started doing the math and I realized I could actually save money by buying a container 
if I could find a cheap enough place to actually put the container with our things in it. So this here is what it looks like most of the time. I honestly don't have these bay doors. I need to learn the name of these doors. I don't have the doors open very often. This area right here, I'm quite happy with. We're gonna cover that in a sec, but further back into the container here, this is definitely more the storage area. And we're still kind of deciding how to clean it up because we wanna get rid of more stuff and we just moved in. So these are just standard Home Depot shelves and we just doubled them up so we could get more effective use of the space. But one thing that we realized immediately is that we needed lighting. So I got these aluminum tracks for holding LED strips and I hot glued them together with some magnets and then they could just attach to the ceiling in whatever orientation I want. So in the front of the container where I do more of my building, I've got four around the top and then down the center, kind of like these airplane style hallway lights, we just run them down the top. And coming down this way, this is, uh, the organized chaos of where I do most of my tinkering and electrical building. So when we're prepping for a film shoot for work, this is where we will do camera prep stuff. It won't be this messy. We're right now in the middle of doing an electrical project where I'm building out a battery for my electric bike. So this is kind of usually what my workstation will look like. And some people this makes them uh, nauseous. But for me, I like seeing all the things and this is how I roll. So we just put a sheet of plywood on one of the slats of this shelving system. Uh, we cut a hole in this top shelf so we could easily do a top down angle of what we're, whatever we're working on here. And then again, the theme here is just LED strip lighting all around the surfaces where I wanna be able to see easy. It's a shame because I did just uh, break this dimmer switch mount right before we filmed this video. So I've got to make a new one, but this dimmer dims the lights in the full container. Some other little like work area lights. I've got these USB powered lights from blind spot and I just cable clamped a piece of wire to it so I could hold it in a position, put it in a USB dongle, turn it off and on, just some quick USB lighting. Down here I've got a dedicated light as well, powered off USB to get more light onto this workstation. For power into the container, we're really not running that many tools at a given time. So we can get away with one 15 amp circuit. So there's an outlet near our suite that has a built-in breaker on it. And from that, we have an extension cord running to a NOCO insert plug. So this is basically just an extension cord piece that can go through the wall of the container and create like a water sealed connection. That gets us easy way to get extension cords into the container without having to do any custom AC wiring, which would probably require inspections to do properly. So I just have this one main AC strip here that I have extension cords kind of going to different areas. It's not the safest way to do things, but as long as I'm not doing heavy power draws at the same time off multiple areas, uh, this cabling is gonna do just fine. To get power to this side of the container, from this side I just use, again, more magnetic hooks to just hang the cord over the top and uh, that system's worked out pretty well for me. So I kind of made the decision that this forward entry area would be where most of the like building of stuff happens. This is supposed to be some of the more delicate projects back here. Try not to get that area too dusty. And when I started grinding stuff in here and cutting metal, I noticed so much surface dust would just get around. So I tried to prevent some of that by putting up a plywood wall here. So that way it's at least somewhat of a, somewhat of a barrier. But I just noticed that I really can't be grinding and cutting in this space too much if I want to keep that dust off other sensitive stuff that's getting stored in here. So that's what caused me to start thinking pretty quickly about how do I have a cutting station that I could use both inside the container and out. And uh, mounting something to the side of the door seemed like a pretty good option. So that's what we went with. I just uh, took some shelving slats from the shelves, welded it onto the door, put a three quarter sheet of ply, this is my cutting station. This is a swag off-road table. It's an upright cutter. This is like one of my favorite metal cutting tools of all time, being able to use like a deep cut handheld bandsaw in this upright format. It's, it's such a good investment. I'm so thrilled with this setup here. So because it's at this orientation, I can take really long pieces of metal and cut them here without being limited to the walls of the container. So it's I like how I can 
go in or out. So if I want to do a quick metal project inside the container, I don't have to open the doors, but if I have a big long piece of metal that I'm going to cut or lots of pieces, I can open up the door, do it outside, and most of the shavings are going to fall here. Again, we're mixing filmmaking stuff with tools, so I put these kind of carriers here so I could put a lot of my stands and lighting equipment and make it quickly accessible before we pack up to go. So these again are just the arms from the shelving in the back that were extra because I didn't use as many of the main shelves. So we just welded these to the door and uh, now we've got shelves for big long things. So I'm really happy with this door and I'm quite thrilled that it came out somewhat square and in its swing there's no areas where it really gets hung up at all. We put a weather strip on the inside. So this door upgrade was a serious quality of life improvement for actually trying to use this as, as a shop because I can actually get into it quickly. The keypad it was a little more expensive than just a deadbolt, but I love that I don't need to carry keys with me to get inside. I've never done a door install, so I wanted to share with you the steps that I took to achieve it in this container and also just talk through some of the lessons I learned. So finding a door was hard because a lot of the new steel doors cost well over $500. I found one on Craigslist from a used building. It was some new hinge hardware and this electric lock. I had almost everything I needed besides the bare steel to build the outer frame with. Okay, these pieces right here are the frame that came from the building it was torn out of. And this metal is just way too thin and flimsy. So if I mount the door to this and use the tab system and weld that in the container, it's going to... It's definitely not gonna hold square and it'll be really flimsy. So I've got this steel over here, which I'm gonna build the outer frame of this frame with, weld the two together and put that into the container. So my hole has to be the size of the outer big frame. Let's build it. Here's the rough frame made tacked together. Now we just need to cut a hole for it. Now my frame is overbuilt technically, but I chose that width of outer square tubing to match how deep the grooves were on the walls of the container itself so that way I could end up with a flush fit. To cut the hole I just marked roughly with sharpie on the container and then used some masking tape to assist with just grinding lines and I think I went through just about two five inch uh, thin cutting discs to get this hole and then put on a larger abrasive to clean up the bottom and top edges. Hey look I did a thing. There's a hole. Look at that. Once I had the hole for the frame cut, I wanted to actually combine the door itself with the frame as it was going in because I didn't want to risk any possibility that the door goes out of square or any of that stuff because I, I really was nervous about that part. So what I did is I welded these cross members to the door itself after carefully measuring what made the door square. So that way, as we shifted it into the container, I was guaranteed it wasn't gonna randomly change on me. And I will say having my younger brother here with the second set of hands was very helpful because the door got the door got very heavy. Placing the door in the container itself because my walls were a little bent, I just uh, stood back, used my icrometer, got things flush to the look that I wanted and uh, started welding. together so much welding to do <laughs> so after way too many cans of spray paint we finally had a painted finished door in general I think I would put in the door this way again minus one thing I really didn't need to double weld the whole seam all the way around the perimeter of the door uh, I probably could have got away with just doing the corners and some couple inch sections along and then use like some industrial grade sealant to really waterproof it. Uh, but I was stubborn and I just kept welding and I actually would flip the breaker like this was a new 240 volt plug that I, I haven't run my welder on before and I kept breaking like flipping the breaker from overheating or I don't know what was going on. I was, I was drawing too much power so I had to dial back my voltage on the welder and so 
it's frustrating because a lot of the, most of this weld actually isn't even good weld it's kind of just surface level like hot glue style weld where it's not really penetrated properly on the metal and so that kind of frustrates me because it's very you can any welder if they looked at this they would kind of scoff at at the weld because it's not a good one uh, but i was getting water down the wall of the container into this top edge and it would pool at the bottom of my floor there so that wasn't good so basically what i did is i just took a section of metal from the cutout we did and I just welded it onto the top edge of the container there to just act as an overhang. And because the metal's thick enough and it was a strong enough weld, it doesn't actually need support. So it's kind of a, it's a janky solution, but it acts as a, as a water cover. And now I no longer get water on my floor. And that's great. And so I'll just say out of the gate, if you're gonna have a container dropped off at a, at a location where there's a side driveway next to a landlord's house, uh, please just do a, tr a crane truck. I was stressed. It actually was too far this way, about two and a half feet. So the gap in between the container and the house here was too, like it was, it was just, it was too tight. I didn't have a high lift jack. This is just a cheap one from Craigslist that I got for 20 bucks. It's sketchy. So that's as high as I'm gonna, pressurize this jack because with the container loaded it's a lot heavier to do this so I just I don't recommend trying to move a loaded container by hand it is quite a bit lighter when it's just an empty shell so what we did was jack up all four corners of the container and get wood shims under so basically you go jack that end stack wood underneath lower it down onto the wood go over to the other end and we put these slides so we basically took big long boards like this gave basically the container a track to slide on so we had these flat on the ground to give it a smoother surface and then me and some helping hands took two by sixes which are narrower than this we're able to get it underneath the edge of the container and basically pry and walk the container actually across those thin shims on the ground and that is how we shuffled the whole thing over like two feet. Once we shifted the container over a couple feet and actually moved it back on this cement pad, uh, it came time to level it. And I didn't think leveling was important, but at first where we had just dropped it, the doors of the container were actually twisted a little bit because the ground wasn't flat and it became really hard to open those side doors. So kind of just eyeball it, if it looks straight it is, and put blocks underneath, lowered it down and just good enough was good enough. And especially as you're lowering the container, you really don't want this handle to smack you right in the jaw and basically cut your tongue off or break things. As I normally do in the spring, I think, huh, maybe I should try getting into shape or, or a little stronger or something. I don't know. So I thought I'd, hey, let's weld the pull-up bar. The foot bar actually came as an afterthought because I realized jumping up to it every time is a little hard to do just because it wastes energy. And later into the evening, normally when I find time to try to do some pull-ups, it's pretty dark out, so it's actually hard to see the bar. So using this as a step up and assist which I definitely need. I need an assist at this state of uh, my strength. So you can like rest the foot off it and kind of like do assisted starts. I can clip the bands to the lower bar as an anchor point, And then you can use the separated handles kind of like as a overhead press situation and just increase the intensity. <laughs> Nick, do you think at this point in the video, anybody's noticed my footwear? Maybe. Do you pretty, like? Pretty subtle, but it's it's something. So, I am a huge fan of the Croc, like a big enthusiast, mainly because it's just so easy to quickly put on his footwear. In the first off-name brand pair that I bought, it had all the holes in top like a normal pair of Crocs, and this is like their like specialist. This is called the Specialist Two. 
and it's got a closed toe and that's actually really helpful if you're doing anything with shavings like wood shavings metal shavings because on my first pair last when i was working on the van i'd get all these metal shavings into my toes and then it would just basically be like splinter town so these ones i like because it's got side vents so your foot doesn't get sweaty but it's got a closed toed top and uh i'm such a i'm such a fan of the crocs like i'm just One of the quality of life upgrades I made to the welder back when we were building the van is adding a longer gas hose to it. I believe this is a 20 foot one. This, this upgrade right here makes me, uh, makes me really happy. In my last uh, tool video, I think it was a year ago, I talked about some of my favorite guilty pleasure little tools. And I asked you guys what your favorite tools were. And a bunch of you mentioned these Niplex adjustable pliers. And I've got to say, this is, it's got to be one of my favorite adjustable wrenches of all time. Like I'm a big fan of the vice grips, but being able to immediately adjust to any size. And then usually when you use an adjustable crescent wrench, it's got a little bit of play and you can't get it quite perfect. And that's when you start to round the bolts. And that's why you don't see most good mechanics ever have adjustable wrenches but with this one when you adjust it then you can clamp down on it and, and give it that extra grip it's incredible the the bolts that you can break off with this with quite a bit of ease and it doesn't round the edge i'm surprised i'd never heard of these before and they weren't cheap but uh now they're one of my favorites as well so thanks for the recommendation these are these are awesome this welding helmet i like because it's got a weld mode and a grind mode with an external switch um, other helmets that I've seen that switches on the inside. So I like that I can easily switch this when it's on my head. The grind mode basically means it doesn't trigger the dark shade when you're just grinding, but it still protects your face. So that little switch on the outside, big one. My dad used to weld barefoot to tan his feet. <laughs> kind of a weird dude. Well, friends, thanks for joining me in the tour of this container. I don't know if you find it that interesting, but uh, I hope you can tell how excited I am to have this space set up. And we've got some ideas of things we wanna build, and some of them are a little more long-term and some of them are gonna start showing up pretty quickly. So hopefully you're in it for the making content because there's gonna be more of that coming alongside the filmmaking stuff. And we're just gonna continue to use YouTube as a sandbox. So thanks for following along. We'll catch you in the next one. And remember, life's better when you make stuff. Peace.